Hi. There are many structures and architectural shapes that can be built with FlexiTrack. In this video, we're going to show you how you can easily build a dome using FlexiTrack. At Flexibility Concepts, we have a spreadsheet available to you that will help you design your dome. This will save you a lot of brain power. The spreadsheet will ask you four questions about the dome you want to build. First of all, it's going to ask you the span and the height of the dome you want. Then it will give you the choices of the types of FlexiTrack you can use and the rib spacings you can use. Refer to the chart on the spreadsheet to help you determine which choices will satisfy the loading requirements of your dome. After you've entered your four choices, the spreadsheet will give you a list of all the components you'll need for your dome. Go ahead and print it out. You can take this with you when you build your dome. Now the primary components of the dome are a tension ring at the bottom of the dome, the ribs that make up the body of the dome, and then at the top there's a compression ring. And for this demonstration we're going to build a 12 foot wide dome with a 4 foot height. We're out in the shop now and we're going to show you how to actually build a dome. For this demonstration we're wanting to build a 12 foot diameter dome with a 4 foot rise in the center. And we're going to start with the tension ring which is the band around the bottom of the dome. It's usually easiest just to take your tape measure and hook it on a nail or screw in the floor. We have a screw here already in the floor. This time we're going to build a 12 foot diameter dome. So I'm going to draw the six foot radius. Now this will be the outside line for your dome. On any of these curved components, if you'd rather, you can order a full scale template from us. It'll come like this on a three foot wide printout. Then all you have to do is curve your flexi track to match it and lock it in shape. That's one more option for you. Now we're going to shape the flexi track to make the tension ring on the bottom. We're going to shape it to match the line we've drawn. A printout calls for, it says we need four lengths of flexi track to come in 10 foot lengths. So we're going to take the first piece of flexi track and shape it here for you. Flexi track is so easy to shape by hand. You can shape it to match just about any shape you want. You can do S shapes, all kinds of curves, but of course for this one we're just doing a smooth arc and circle. Now that I've got this shape to match the line on the floor, I need to lock this in its shape. And the easiest way to do this was with the little feature that FlexiTrack has called the hammerlock tab. I've got a sample here so I can show you up close what the hammerlock tab looks like. It's these little tabs here, and this little arc, and all you have to do is take your hammer, lay this on the concrete, and mash these flat onto the concrete, and that locks it in the sh whatever shape you have it in. Let me show you how easy it is and how fast it works. Now those are locked, but I'm going to go back and make sure they're all mashed really good and flat. You'll know when it's properly hammer locked when it's smooth to the touch. And if you like, you can still add screws along the side like this, but you really don't need to as long as you use 20 gauge track. So what if you're using one of the heavier versions of Flexi Track? I have a sample here. With the 18 or 16 gauge Flexi Track, You'll probably still want to hammer lock it to hold it in place while you install screws alongside. You'll need to install these screws to get the proper load rating that's on your printout. One per section per side on each side is enough. If you're building a full half sphere, you can leave this strap alone. But if you're building a flatter dome like we are today, you'll need to pull this inside strap out. And we'll tell you why later, but I'll show you how it comes out so easily. And you might as well pull it out now at this stage. To connect all these curved pieces into a continuous tension ring, you need to just overlap your joint 
and screw it like you would a regular piece of track. But before you install your screws, you'll need to adjust it and make sure that your joint maintains the same radius as you've drawn on the floor. Then you can install your screws. When you've got all your pieces curved and spliced together, check one last time to make sure that they match the line you've drawn on the floor for your dome. Once you've matched them and make sure everything's just right, then you'll be ready to make your final cut and your final splice. That looks good there. Now, we just need to, need to snip this because it needs to land right at that point. I'll snip this, it'll go inside there. Okay, now I need to screw it right there. Okay, there's your final splice. Now you've got your tension ring.